Chapter 2, The Most Perfect Dollhouse. The sign said, Rainbow Falls, three miles. Amy's run had long since slowed to a walk. Now she hesitated, aware that darkness was closing in and she was leaving Claiborne behind her. Her eyes burned and her chest felt tight, but mostly she was just tired. Somewhere back there, she'd shed much of her anger in a storm of tears. Ahead, lights glimmered in a far in far apart houses. Misty patches of dark loomed between them. It's pitiful, she thought, being out here all alone in the cold with no one to care, while other people are snug and safe with their families. Well, actually, the June evening was pleasantly warm, not cold. And if her parents didn't know where she was, and maybe did and if her parents didn't know where she was, and Mimi didn't care, there was someone nearby who did. She knew that Aunt Claire, her father's sister, would be glad to see her. Aunt Claire was staying temporarily in the huge old house that had belonged to Amy's great-grandparents. She had invited Amy to stop in any time, but so far, Amy hadn't done it. She felt shy with this aunt who had lived in Chicago since long before Amy was born. The two evenings she'd spent with the Trelores since her return to Claiborne had been uncomfortable. She and Amy's mother seemed to have little to say to each other. But Aunt Claire likes me, Amy told herself. She said she thought we were a lot alike. I'll just stay for a few, I'll just stay for a little while and then I'll go home. Maybe Aunt Claire would give her a ride. At the next crossroad, Amy turned, then turned again onto a narrow gravel road lined with tall weeds and an occasional oak. The road seemed longer and the almost dark than it sorry. The road seemed longer and the almost dark than it had during the daylight visits to the house she'd made with her father. Amy walked faster, looking for the sharp curve that led into the yard. Night settled around her, wrestling with the sounds of small creatures in the brush. Her heart sank as the sudden thought that Aunt Claire might have gone into town for the evening. Then the house loomed in front of her, with lights shining out from every floor. Even the attic was lit. Amy had never seen the house look so friendly. When she'd come with her father before Aunt Claire's return, they'd usually stayed outside, walking around to look at doors and windows. On the few occasions that they'd gone in to check the heating and the water pipes, they'd remained only a few minutes, tiptoeing like burglars through the rooms of musty furniture. Amy climbed the wide front steps and crossed the porch. The wrought iron knocker shaped like an eagle, thunked hollowly against the front door. Aunt Claire didn't answer. Amy knocked again, then tried the latch. The door was unlocked. She let herself in and stood uncertainly in the foyer. The house was very quiet. Aunt Claire? Her voice sounded peculiar, almost like a wail in the stillness. Is anybody here? There was a rush of footsteps on a bare floor overhead, then a pause. Who? Who's down there? Aunt Claire sounded far away and a little scared. It's me, Amy. Good grief, Amy. Oh, I'm glad it's just you. I mean, I couldn't imagine. Come right on up here. The curving stairway rose through the tower at one side of the hall. Amy ran up to the second floor and looked along the broad corridor. Near its end, the door to the attic stood open. Keep coming, Aunt Claire called. I'm up here in the storehouse of the world. Amy ran down the hall and up the attic steps. Aunt Claire waited at the top, dressed in blue jeans and a pink shirt knotted at the waist. Her gray streaked hair was tied back under a rose colored scarf and her thin face was bright with welcome. She threw her arms around Amy and hugged her. You can't imagine how my heart's thudding. It's a real shock to hear another human voice in this old tomb. Amy hugged her back. I'm sorry I scared you, she said, 
The door was unlocked. And a good thing too, her aunt interrupted. Though I thought it was locked, I never would have heard the knocker appear. She glanced down the stairs. Did someone come with you? You didn't come all this way by yourself, did you? No. Amy nodded and backed away from Aunt Claire's probing look. What are you doing up here? Looking for something? Looking for things to throw away, Aunt Claire rep replied, and finding them. Tons of things. I'll have to hire a truck to carry them off. Moth-eaten clothes, broken chairs, cracked mirrors. Amy could feel the concerned look that followed her as she wandered around the attic. How about a Coke? Aunt Claire suggested. I have to get away from all this dust anyway. I think I'm allergic to it. Or to work. I'm not sure which. She sneezed as if to prove it. <laughs> Amy was in a far corner of the attic. Okay, she agreed. But she didn't move. Because directly in front of her was a mysterious sheeted object that came to a peak at one corner. The thing whatever it was, was almost as tall as Amy. She leaned forward and gave the... She, a tug. Dust rose around her as the cover slipped on the, to the floor. Oh, Amy gave a squeaky little gasp. Oh, Aunt Claire, look at this. It's the most perfect dollhouse I've ever seen. She dropped to her knees as her aunt came to stand beside her. It's this house. Look, here's the stair tower and the front porch and the eagle door knocker. Everything. It's just beautiful. Aunt Claire ran her finger along one side of the facade. The entire front of the house swung away, revealing rooms full of furniture. Amy loved miniatures. Some of the bookshelves in her bedroom at home had been emptied to make room for tiny tables, lamps, a chest of drawers, even a piano that she'd bought with her own money or that had been given to her. The whole unhappy afternoon, Luann Ellen, the scene with her mother, all was forgotten as she stared at the exquisitely detailed rooms. There's a grandfather clock, she marveled. It has, a sh it has a ship painted on it, just like the real one in the hall downstairs. And the rugs are the same. And the painting above the fireplace. And look at the tiny candlesticks. There used to be a pair just like them on the dining room table downstairs, Aunt Claire said. Every detail is correct. Her voice was curiously flat. Where did it come from, Amy demanded. Was it yours when you were a little girl? She thought about the times she'd come to the old house with her father and had waited impatiently for him to say they could leave. If she'd known the dollhouse was here, she would have wanted to stay all day. It was my 15th birthday present from Grandma and Grandpa, Trelore, your grandparents, Aunt Claire said. Can you imagine giving a 15-year-old a dollhouse? I love it, Amy said. I love miniatures. I'll love miniatures all my life. Maybe she and Aunt Claire weren't so much alike after all. I could just sit and look at it for hours. Well, Aunt Claire said, Grandma and Grandpa expected me to play with it. It was an expensive, beautiful reminder that they wanted a little girl in their house, not a teenager who was in a big hurry to grow up. Her voice softened as she reached in and picked up an inch square needlepoint pillow from the sofa in the parlor. Grandma Jalor made a lot of the furnishings herself. It was a lovely gift, I know that, and I was a wicked, ungrateful girl. Do you know I cried when I saw it? I'd been hoping for a phonograph. Amy couldn't imagine being disappointed with such a gift. Which bedroom was yours? she asked. Her aunt pointed to a corner room. It's the only one that isn't perfectly reproduced to the last detail, she said with a wry little smile. 
I had Elvis Presley posters all over the walls. Grandma Chalor wouldn't go that far, to be accurate. She made it look the way she thought a young girl's room should be. Amy examined the canopied bed, the flowered quilt, the white painted furniture, and ruffled curtains. It was a room for a princess. How could Aunt Claire not have loved it? The whole thing was a mistake, Aunt Claire said, as if she could read Amy's thoughts. I mean, our coming to live here was all wrong. When our parents died about a week apart, they were on vacation in South America and caught some vicious flu bug. I was 14 and your father was just one year old. A cousin with a big family of his own offered to take Paul and me. We should have gone to them then. But Grandma and Grandpa Trelor wouldn't hear of it. They had lots of room, plenty of money to hire part-time help, and not enough to think about. Grandma's arthritis made her quite lame, and she was terribly afraid of becoming an in invalid? Invalid? I think she hoped your father and I would keep them young. But we were a much bigger job than she'd expected, especially me. Aunt Claire grimaced at the memory. We had our first battle the day we moved in. She'd bought a whole closet full of roughly dresses for me to wear to school. When everyone else was wearing pleated skirts and loafers, I had a fit. Abruptly, Aunt Claire swung the hinged front of the house, closing it with a snap. Oh well, she sighed. It's no use looking back. Let's go downstairs and find something cold to drink before I get thoroughly depressed. She turned and walked swiftly to the top of the stairs. Coming? Reluctantly, Amy stood up. She hated to leave the dollhouse, but now that she knew it was there, she intended to come back again. She wanted to examine every piece of furniture, peer into every corner. Finding it seemed like a good, finding it seemed a good sign like finding a four-leaf clover on a day that had brought nothing but trouble.